the Rikishi Fatu Off the Top Podcast. Let's go. Rikishi Fatu, all y'all ready? We the ones, it's 2024. Keep it locked on the Rikishi Fatu Podcast. Off the top. We gon' talk about everything. Everything wrestling, everything hip-hop. Keep it locked. It's time to smarten up. How long is that drink of yours, Jeff? Right? Okay. You, you right got now. you one? Okay, if we give it to you after. All right. Ooh, oh, damn. Yeah, it's not be I got to wait for Joey's. Damn, that looks so good. Oh, damn. <laughs> oh, sh. Boy, you don't put your foot in this one here. Drink massive. It is delicious. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm. Okay. My DJ's on the ones and twos. Coming in with the... What, what, what do you think, TMD? Manguia. Manguia. This drink is called yeah. the Caparana. Capirana. Capa who? Caparina. Well, I just changed it. It's going to be called Rikishi's Monkey. Monkey. That's, what, that's what the drink is. Give me a yeet. <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, once again, welcome back to another episode of Off the Top with Rikishi Fatu. I am your co-host, TMD. Uh, I want to thank Knox Pro, Knox Pro Entertainment, the Knox Pro Academy, located here in Van Nuys, California. Eh? You want to learn from the best? Well, check no other place than Knox Pro Academy here in Van Nuys, California. Go to www.knoxpro.com to learn everything and more. Big Quiche, how are you feeling? Oh, man. I'm happy to be here, man. You know, I don't even know what day is it. How was your weekend? <laughs> like, What'd you do? It, it was crazy. Um, I was actually off, but not off this weekend. Never uh, on a Saturday, you know, I'm not used to being home. But a Saturday, I uh, had a, a brunch uh, with my niece, Vaughn, V-R-A. Oh, yeah? Yeah, she, she uh, came to visit, a uh, little spring break. But then I uh, headed back to Georgetown University. Mm-hmm. Big shout out to Georgetown University. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And, and then, uh, you know, I took her to uh, one of her favorite places when she comes to town. It's uh, up there in uh, North Hollywood. No, not North Hollywood. It's up in uh, Tahunga. Tahunga. Woodland okay. Hills. Okay. Mm-hmm. It's called Fogo de Chaos. Fogo de Chaos. It's a Brazilian steakhouse. Ooh. And so she, you know, uh, I take her up there. Whenever she's in town, I'll take her up there. She likes that, you know, they got that garlic... Uh, Garlic uh, filet mignon. Yes, sir. And they walk around with the things and you sample yeah. them and stuff, right? All the meat comes I've been on, there like one on, or the, twice, on you know? that stick and you just mm-hmm, order. Mm-hmm. About, you know, my, my favorite to, to eat up there is the beef ribs. Ooh. I suck at that just like melt in your mouth, man. And then, you know, I go up there and I'll, I'll have, they, they have one hell of a salad bar. Mm-hmm. There's only certain things that I eat when I go there. It's... You know, you can eat all the beef you want, right. but I'll have the, you know, the beef ribs. Mm-hmm. But they got all kind of meat, like, you know, lamb chops, Everything. you name it. They got, mm-hmm. a, you know, ribeyes, blah, blah, blah. But on the salad bar, I like, you know, they got that Brazilian rice with the black beans. Mm-hmm. Man, them damn boy, it's like slap you in your mouth when you mix those Ooh, two together, man. The fried bananas. Yeah, well, yeah, they mm-hmm. have that too. Mm-hmm. Plantains, Plantains and stuff yep, like that. Yep, mm-hmm. But yeah, check this out. This island boy, I don't eat bananas. Like, I don't eat, you know, plantain. Mm-hmm. I never have since I was young. But really? anyhow, so that, you know, mm-hmm. so I took her to her place there. You know, we had the family together, you know, and it was good. And then, uh, you know, Sunday was just kind of a vibing type of a day. And that's, that's how my weekend went. So if you guys are ever up there looking for a good Brazilian steakhouse, Go check it out. It's up there in Tahunga, Fogo de Chaos. And you tell them that Kishi sent you. And oh, and by the way, I, I took um, uh, Drink Master with me. Really? And we now our new gimmick is What's that? when we go to places to go eat, we'll actually go to the bar mm-hmm. and try different, you know, tasting, you know, drinks and so forth. Okay. And then what happened? We'll come here, we'll try. We'll try to see if we can mimic that same drink or have the ringmaster put his touch on it. And so, hey, uh, ringmaster, so what was that uh, that drink that, uh, what was the name of the bottle at that Brazilian steakhouse up there in Tonga? Uh, Rojoro. Uh-huh. Rojoro, how do you spell that? R-O-T-A. R-O-T-A. 
48. Okay. Damn, that just sounds like a... Very sophisticated. Sounds like a pistol. Hmm. <laughs> a, yeah, bang, bang. Like something you drink, boy. Something you shoot. Like, yeah, but they'll just knock you out, man. But yeah, man, so that bottle there, we had a few a few of those drinks in. Okay. I, re- I think I, I drank more than I ate up there. Really? Yeah, I just needed to unwind, you yeah, know what I mean? you've been so, doing a lot lately. Yeah, well, so that was my weekend, man, so. Well, did you see, did you hear about the slap oh, Lord. heard around the world? We're talking about Cody Rhodes slapping the sh** out of your cousin, Dwayne The Rock Johnson. Well, why did it got to be the sh** out of him? Did he actually sh- when he, he or did you even he, he wound back and he so he just slapped a rock but it it looked it looked really was it was it as hard as rock slapped to him <sighs> yeah. i don't know the rock's a lot probably, bigger i mean that was yeah i might have slapped the piss out of a cody mhm right but it was that hard of a slap yes sir it was really it was really hard i guess it's called a receipt yes sir uh hey Shout out to you, Cody. You know, I mean, the Cody get, got some nuts to to bulge up against the Brahma bull. That's why I had to ask. You know what I mean? That, that must have been some good TV, boy. Wow. Hey, ladies and gentlemen, is, was that if that's some good TV? Go ahead and throw the come, throw some thumbs up in the comments there, and give me a yeet. Okay. <laughs> I mean, wow. You know, you know, Cody Rhodes being the, a second generation superstar, Brock yeah. being third generation. I mean, to see them going at it, I mean, we, we, we now we have a clear picture of what's going on to WrestleMania. We now know that night one, the main event, is going to be a tag match between uh, Cody Rhodes and Seth Rollins mm-hmm. against The Rock and, and Roman Reigns. So we know that's happening. The bloodline. Yes, sir. And, and the stipulation is, if Rhodes and Rollins win, then all members of the bloodline will be barred from ringside during Rhodes' undisputed WWE Universal Championship match against Roman Reigns on night two. Ah. If Roman Reigns and Rock win, then the championship match on night two will be held under bloodline rules. Big quiche. Everybody wants What's to know, on? what are bloodline rules? Joey. <clears throat> You really want to know what bloodline rules is? Yes, sir. Does, does the world is is the world even ready for the bloodline rules? I mean, I'm talking about you. You're talking about anything, anything from trash cans to tables to sticks to chairs to whatever that they find in that arena. I can use that towards your skull, your body, bust you open as much as we want. You, 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 you uh, is the world really ready for bloodline rules? Man, I tell you what, we've been fighting bloodline rules all our lives. From from back home in, into the islands, on the streets of the islands, the streets of the Bay Area, San Francisco, all the way down here to L.A. Hey, man, this is nothing new to us. The person that has to worry about the bloodline rules would have to be the opposition. And I'm talking about Cody Rhodes. And I'm talking about Seth Rollins. You want to hear more? Or should I just leave it at that? I don't see... I don't see the story being finished. And I'll tell you why. And you know when I when I spit, this is nothing that's been thought about. This just comes off as we do our show every Tuesday. It comes just fresh off the dome. Nothing scripted. Nothing. Nothing's even talked about. I don't find out anything until you bring it to me. And you know, again, I'm going to talk to the people from a entertainment standpoint and from a business factor. Right, entertainment, yeah, we all want to see the good guy finish the story. But there always has to be the, the guys to put asses in seats to be able to mix it up with people that are the baby faces, that are the fans' fans' favorite for the time being. 
Where do we go if we finish the story with Cody and Romans? Where do we're, we're from a okay, the fans happy, everybody's happy, but where do we go after that? Whereas if in case we do go into the second night with the bloodline story, there's so many ways you can go you know, coming off of those, that angle. So many other branches you can take. It can be down the line, Rock Cody for whatever match. Roman Seth for whatever match. Come back into a cage match for whatever match. I just probably a whole year, this one angle can go on and on, which what? Generates revenue for TKO generates revenue for WWE. And here's the beautiful thing. It continues, continues to lock in the fans on the product that's been out here now for, what, a year with T... Not even a year yet with TKO. So we got to see numbers, man. We got to see asses and seats, man. We got to see every place that, that, that this company goes to with these four guys needs to be selling out. And I can see th this this type of angle mm -hmm. doesn't need to be featured in any 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 arenas, coliseums. It needs to be featured on all these big stadiums across the world. And so that's what my thought is. Do I want to see Cody finish the match? Hell yeah, on a personal level? Yes. Yes, he deserves to, man. His, the legacy and his family, family dynasty, yes, it's a must. It's a must. But at the same time, you know, timing is everything, man. Yes, sir. You know, I mean, how many times you going to get The Rock and Roman Reigns? How many times? Right. Right. You tell me the goats of all goats. How many times you, a person, if anybody in this industry tells me that they would never want to work with The Rock or Roman. Yeah, you're full of <laughs> You're full of because all these guys going to do, number one, is help put a name, put respect to your name. And number two is going to put some money in your pocket. Probably the biggest money you ever had in your pocket. Yeah. Yes, sir. Spe speaking of biggest, would you say that WrestleMania 40 is going to be the biggest night in your family's um, history? I, you know what? Back to back, yes, because it's 40th anniversary. But now this is getting to be like, this is this is who we are, the bloodline. I mean, this ain't nothing new to us. What are we we here in Los Angeles? Back to back, the Samoan dynasty, the Usos, and Roman Reigns. That was one. So that was historical moment. Now 40, the big 40, WrestleMania, and here we are again. What? Bloodline at it again. Yes, sir. So at the end of the day is this, man. Let, let the wheel turn. Let's somehow, you know, let's get all we can get out of these this this this, uh, this angle. Especially when you got to go to people's champ. Sh I mean, how long we know, you know, how do we know how long he's going to be able to hang in there? I mean, he's in good shape. Roman's in good shape. Cody's in good shape, you know. Uh, Seth Rollins. Got a little banged up, but he's smart enough to work around things. Mm -hmm. And so, yeah, I, I think it's a win-win situation for everybody, even if Cody does not, does not close the story on WrestleMania. And that's my take. Wow. Take it or leave it. Drop Ooh. bombs on that. Ladies and gentlemen, there's going to be more bombs dropped when we return with more Off the Top with Rikishi Fatu. Rikishi Fatu, Off the Top. We coming right back. And we are back with more Off the Top with Rikishi Fatu in more breaking news. Come on with it. What is it? Oh, man, you know <laughs> what it is. Come on now. Uh -oh. Your sons, 
the news. It's out. Mm -hmm. Jay has challenged Jimmy, yeet or no yeet, at WrestleMania 40. What is your take on that, Big Keish? Well, 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 well. Man, that's exciting news. I'm, I'm very, uh, man, I'm excited, you know, to be able to have the boys out there. Man, another historical uh, uh, bloodline uh, um, family tree uh, news, whatever you want to call it. But to have my two sons out there on WrestleMania uh, finally going after it together, man, this is a big deal for the whole fans. Everybody, you're finally going to see the dream match, Uso versus Uso, you know, Yeet versus No Yeet, <laughs> you know. It's going to be exciting, you know. I, I'm, sure. I'm, I'm very happy to, you know, to be the last to know about it. <laughs> <laughs> I think this would be the third brother versus brother match at WrestleMania. Of course, Owen and Brett, I think Matt and Jeff might have did it. And now your sons, Jay and Jimmy. I mean, I know that's got to make you, I mean... Just super, super proud. But I know, Big Keish, that that you can't just sit at home and watch that. I, I, there, I, whether you're, I don't know. Well, I, well, I'm not too far from uh, WrestleCon. You know, I'll be there at WrestleCon, and uh, you're gonna yeah. be you're gonna be in the vicinity. I'm, I'm I'm gonna be in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. Should people be on the lookout for Black Lincoln Continentals? I'm not too far. That's all I can say is I'm not too far from the stadium, Joey. So what you're trying to say, Big Keisha, is you're not too far from the stadium. I'm not too far. Have another drink. <laughs> <laughs> Have another drink. I'm trying to tell you I am not too far from the stadium where WrestleMania will be. Of course, you know, they got a lot of Uber. They got a lot of... Lincoln, black, all that stuff. They got, you know, limousines over there. Who knows? But I am not too far from the stadium. So let's leave that. Because I know every wrestling blog, every wrestling, you know, website is probably going to be listening to this. Yes, sir. This right here. Mm -hmm. Because the news was that yeet versus no yeet. <laughs> but where's the man that eats? I'll tell you. I'm not going to be far. Hmm. Well, speaking of the bloodline, uh, Big Keish, we're going to go to a fan question. Okay, come on. Give me give me, give me, me some claps for the fans. And this give is from the claps. YouTube page. This is going to be from <laughs> James Schmidt. All right. 7759. If the bloodline was around in the 1990s, who would the members have been and what would their roles be? Well, yeah, we 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 were around in the 90s. I guess like if uh, what he meant by the that new, question. The new era today? Yes, sir. Uh, well, they would all be in, uh, yeah, in the locker room. Okay. Locker room waiting for Uncle Alpha, Uncle Sika, Uncle Rocky, myself, Yoko, you know, The Rock. Yeah, I, 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 would, I would, what, hey, you know, for a shoot. Mm -hmm. <laughs> for a shoot, Grandmaster Sex Days. For a shoot, dude. <laughs> for a shoot. The boy, they were always there in the back, in the back of uh, the locker room back in the days, but, uh. But yeah, that's I guess that's my answer. If it made yeah, absolutely, absolutely any sense with what's what's in this drink? What's in this glass here, man? It's really good. It is absolutely. It's just so damn it's like good. Some kind of sweet. Milk Can I get another one? Taste. Hey, listen, is anybody out there? Not to jump off the subject. Mm -hmm. Anybody out there that you know? We we kind of like to do some drink testing here at Off the Top Studio. So feel free to go ahead and just log on. To, to Kishi's website, you'll see an address there, and feel free to send us you, you some tasty bottles, right? Mm, yes, sir. You can taste a few drinks. Mm-hmm. There you go, bro. <laughs> you even got the mix master drinking. Mm -hmm. I mean, the DJ one and two. So, so back to what we were talking about. If you had to pick, whose side would you be on, or who? Who? Better yet, who do you see coming out victorious at WrestleMania 40 between your sons, Jay or Jimmy? But you know what? Uh, again, I'm going to... Damn, that's a hard one. But I got to put my feelings aside as a father. Uh, on the real. You know, we... Uh, you know, Jay is is having a hell of a year as a single. Jimmy's the same as far as, you know, being involved in the group with the bloodline. And so, you know, to see the... 
uh, the steam that uh, Jay is is having as a single career, you know, it only makes sense from a business standpoint. As if I was on the board of TKO or WWE, mm -hmm. we'd have to go with Heat, right? I would I would feel that it'd be the best, uh, you know, business move is to be able to you know to put you know let Jay you know get the upper hand for. Uh, for WrestleMania against his brother. But, you know, on a personal level, it, mm -hmm. it's a win-win situation, you know, for the boys uh, that they're able to go out there. And this, is, if they have never really, you know, they 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 bring it out when they work with a lot of people, the passion. Because yes, they always want to steal the show. But this one here working against each other, this is really going to be like a show you know, show the world type of shit. You know what I mean? Like, you know, let's me and you do this and let's announce to the world who exactly and what exactly that these two brothers can do. You know, they ride straight up there by the brothers, the likes of, uh, you know, the Hardy Boys. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, I was a big fan of the Briscoes. You know, those guys there yeah, that were in ROH. You know, and uh, uh, to see my sons, uh, you know, being, uh, you know, going against each other for this dream match for the fans, it's a, it's a, it's a win situation for the fans, for the company, for the family, and I'm so damn proud of all of them. So hey, there it is, man. I just pray that they walk out there. You know, I know they're gonna give it all they got. But I also pray that they are able to walk back out the squared circle together, yes, hand in hand. And that's my take, man. There it is. They've come a long way, and you know, there ain't no stopping them now. We've got plenty more when we return with more Off the Top with Rikishi Fatu. Rikishi Fatu, Off the Top. We're coming right back. Uh, Keish, before uh, we, we we let you go for the evening, um, I got a fan question yeah. uh, from the YouTube page. Um, this is going a little bit off topic, but this is, hey, man, we're getting fan questions now. Remember, fans, write in. You That's can write good. in to rakishifatu.com or the YouTube page. Big Keish is on there now interacting <laughs> with you guys. I'm on there. So, man, if you want your questions answered up on this show, please yes, sir. send in them questions. Brian... Byron, actually. Byron Weaver, 8941. That's a good question. Okay. Who do you think should induct Paul Heyman into the 2024 Hall of Fame? Ooh. Damn, that's a tough, tough question. Yes, sir. You're a tough, tough man with tough, tough answers, and the world wants yeah, to hear it. Yeah, you know, uh, man, but, you know, normally something like that, you know, you want to give it to somebody that's close to the guy. You know, I don't, I don't know if... Uh, you know, his kids may, you know, he might want to pass that opportunity to them. Uh, or, you know, uh, who knows, somebody close in the family. Mm -hmm. I don't know, but uh, if you, for somebody that's in the industry, I, I let me, man, for somebody, I, it's got to be good, man. I would almost think somebody from the ECW days, you know, because Philadelphia... Is where Paul had his company at, you know, put a lot of guys on there, you know, that gave them their start. Mm -hmm. he, I'm going to go off and say, in my eyes, um, the way I see somebody to do it justice for Paul, I'd have to go Stone Cold Steve Austin. Wow. Do your research. Yeah, absolutely. You know, there are people there. Mm -hmm. I mean, go back and look at that that vault of ECW, what this guy has uh, promoted, who he's given an opportunity. A lot of your big, big superstars, you know, back in the Attitude Era, you know, they'll come from there. And yes, so I just feel like Stone Cold would just knock it out the park, like really, you know, give Paul his, his rightful 
way to step in and introduce into the Hall of Fame. There it is, folks. You heard a big key saying Stone Cold Steve Austin should be the one to induct Paul Heyman into the 2024 Hall of Fame. And who better? Big Keys, do you have any last words? Hey, remember this. It's free to be kind to one another and always, always smarten up. Cheers. It's time to smarten up. It's time to say things that people are scared to say. It's time to bring you on into my home so you know what time it is. In the locker room, in the hip-hop world, in the wrestling world. You might even come into my kitchen. If y'all can just hear me now, I'm just, hmm. <laughs> Go on and give me a yeet for this drink. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> Looks nice and minty. Yeah, 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 it, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> That's exactly what it tastes like. Yay, yay. Yay, yay. Go on, give me a yeet. <laughs> All right. Oh, Lord. And I want to got an extra bottle for today's episode. Oh, good. Yeah. I, I guess we just doing a lot of drinking out in the past episodes. Because we just bought a bottle. And, oh, drink mess. So we got to stop by and get another you know, bottle. There's a lot to be uh, uh, celebrating. You know, a lot of good stuff happening. 